Would Bobby Douglas please come up? Ladies and gentlemen, you're looking at an old coach. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> There's a picture of a young coach. <laughs> In his prime, he was never on time, and he could have been described as, well, absent-minded at best. We don't have enough time to tell you all the stories I've heard over the last two or three months about how he's gotten worse in recent years. Like the time he read the riot act of the team warning them about being prepared because of the bitter cold they were going to find in Winnipeg. Plane pulled up to the ramp without aid of a flag man because the conditions were so hard none would venture out. And then a picture of all the kids deplaning with every piece of clothing their Nova Scotia wardrobes could muster, followed by the little old coach in shirt sleeves. <laughs> because his winter coat was still back home in the closet. And assistant coach Mark Parker being sent home from the Bridgewater turnoff because no one had brought the uniforms for the basketball game with Parkview. And how there was an empty chair this year at the head table at the NSSAF bas basketball brunch, a spot which had been occupied for decades by the dean of Nova Scotian basketball coaches, Frank Baldwin. A chair which was empty not because Frank was ill, but rather because a certain close friend had forgotten to pick him up. <laughs> Now, any good historian might suspect some of these stories to have been exaggerated. Certainly, I would have if it hadn't sat with the same coach through the entirety of the game at Mike Tanner's Super Bowl party last year, only to see his car still running outside when the game was over. <laughs> uh, I, I, I thought that story was funny about an hour ago until they told me my car was in the parking lot downstairs running with the locked keys inside. <laughs> Honest to God, it's a true story. They came and found me from the, from the, from the license plate. But I told, I told Bob I would confess that uh, he, he, I'm not as old as him, but I guess I've got some of his still problems. But coaches come in all forms, ladies and gentlemen, and this one has moments of silence, but then the silence seems to have lasted too long because his words start spilling at him so fast, you can swear the succeeding words start before the last one's finished. Those who have seen him coach... Remember him standing and shouting instructions and then went halfway down to his seat, jumping up again, starting to cycle all over. Bob O'Flaherty, executive director of Nova Scotia School Athletic Federation, said Douglas, Douglas always shows enthusiasm even after a big loss, as a, such as a provincial final. His comment would be, wasn't that a great game or didn't the kids play well? To this coach, the game was always secondary. He had a greater purpose than the, the one loss column and he followed that philosophy throughout his career. Bob Douglas was born January 11, 1934, in Amherst, where his dad had been reared, his mom being from Pictou Landing. He was educated at Tower Road School, QEH, Acadia, Dow, Boston University, and University of Tennessee. As a youngster and young adult, Bob played softball. He captained the QEH hockey team, and he played for the St. Mary's junior team, which won the Maritime Championships in 1951. He was good enough to be named captain of the QEH 1953 team and was scouted by the Boston Bruins. Fellow coach Terry Burns remembers Bob and brother Jock playing basketball for hour after hour on the outdoor courts at Goresbrook. The early practice must have paid off as his QEH team, coached by Hall of Famer Frank Baldwin, won the Nova Scotia Headmasters in 51 and again in 52. In 1953, Bob played City Intermediate A basketball with Staticona. Guess you gotta hit it harder. Another Frankie Baldwin coach team. It was, it too won the city championship. He went on to play three years for Acadia and then Captain Dow's 1957 team before going on the service and playing basketball there. Bob has been a member of the Ashburn Golf Club for three decades, carrying a respectable 10 handicap. It's not Peter Doig, but it's excellent golf. <laughs> Bobby taught phys ed for a short time at Acadia at St. Pat's and then moved on to begin 33 years at Queen Elizabeth High School where his name and that of QEH Sports has become intertwined and discussed at more breakfast tables than perhaps any others. At QE, he taught phys ed and economics. 
His department head, he was proctor of the school, coached just a little. In addition to his coaching, Bobby Douglas refereed basketball at all levels from 53 to 81. He served as the college assigner for four years, three times assigning for the CIU National Championship, and he was president of the International Association of Approved Basketball Officials in 1963 and 1964. Those who remember Bobby in striped shirt will know that he expected to be treated with respect in much the same way as he treated them, which he did as a coach, in fairness to Bobby. I refereed some of his games, and I can vouch for that. Fellow official Buddy Wallace describes an excellent example. It seems that Dave Dunlop and Bobby were refing a game in which the Australian national team was putting it to the St. of X team one night. It was an emotional time, and as Buddy puts it, X's coach, John Dewar, was giving Doug Douglas the gears all night. After Dunlop made a controversial call, he suddenly realized he was alone on the court with the players. Bobby was down the other end, wrapping his whistle around Coach Dewar's neck so that he could finish wrapping the game. <laughs> there truly is not a list, not, sorry, not time to list a myriad of major contributions this man has made to Nova Scotian sport and Nova Scotian athletes. Just a few. As a lieutenant in the forces, he worked with teams at Staticona. He started and operated the first high school football camp at Big Cove in Pictou County back in the mid-60s. He coordinated basketball clinics at QEH High throughout the 80s. As QEH principal Keith Sticking strongly pointed out, the thing that stood out about Bobby Douglas over the span of his career was that though his assigned teaching and coaching load was considerable, they were nothing compared to the volunteer hours he spent night after night and weekend after weekend. In his first year at QEH football coach back in 1960, his team was 0-4. In his second year, the team beat St. Pat's for City Championship. Bobby Douglas coached football teams at QEH in the, in the succeeding 17 years had 109 wins and 43 losses. Perhaps a move which says more about him than any other was when he became assistant coach to his successor, Mike Tanner, during Mike's first three years. You know, you think about that. This is a guy who coached football for 17 years, turns around and becomes and is willing to be the assistant coach for a kid that he coached uh, years ago. Tanner, who's one of the more than 100 of Bobby's players to have gone on to play university football, had quarterback Bobby's 65 Lions team to their first provincial <laughs> high school title. Bobby once said that the biggest football accomplishment he ever had was that at one time every high school football team, with the exception of Cobbequid and Truro, was coached by one of his former players. Douglas actually started coaching in 1951, but he became mentor of the Seagulls Pee Wee hockey team. He also coached the Halifax Martlets to a double-A senior women's basketball crown, the Halifax Schooners, a senior men's basketball team, the senior B Canadian championships in 1963 and again in 1965. He coached basketball at Acadia, 57-58, which must have been when he picked up that absent-mindedness. He coached QEH to eight provincial basketball titles, six of them in the 1980s, including four consecutive from 1983 through 1986. He was the first winning coach of the New Waterford Coal Bowl in 1982. He still wears one of the silver rings that he and his players received for winning the 1984 Vic Redmond Invitation in Edmonton. In 1964, he coached the QEH basketball team to the Canadian Juvenile Championship. He also piloted the QAH girls basketball to 32 wins in 44 outings. In 